section 1.2 is um, the concept of limit, and this truly is a calculus concept. You've probably seen sort of um, some pieces of this in some of your other classes before, or this sort of an idea alluded to, but um, you, you wouldn't have seen it um, in its full out form in any other course, most likely. So the first thing we're going to talk about of what a limit is, um, this is not a true definition of limit, but it is a conceptual idea. So that's what's written down first. A limit, is the idea of it is it's a Y value that you get really close to. You approach it. You may or may not actually touch it. Okay? So your image might be something like um, what happens with X values on asymptotes. Man, that X value gets really, really close to that vertical line that it can't really touch. You know, the X value limit is actually getting close to 3 or something like that. But when we're talking about limits, we're going to be talking about the Y value and what the Y value is doing. There are three different notations that you need to be aware of. This bottom notation is actually the one that's the general notation we see most often. Okay, but before we get there, let's talk about the two in front of these. Um, this notation is read limit as X approaches 3, and then the little plus sign means from the right. And you can remember that because if you're thinking about your graph, your XY graph, the right-hand side of the graph is the positive side of the graph. So if we've got that little plus, it means we're approaching from the right-hand side. Now, if we're approaching from the right-hand side, it actually means we're moving left. So don't get confused on that, but you're moving from the right-hand side towards something. The second one has this little negative after the three. This negative actually means you're approaching then from the left, the negative side of the graph. And then if there's not a plus or a minus after it, like this last one, it means you have to approach from both sides. So you have to be able to move in from both directions towards that same x value and see what in the world is the y value doing. Okay, so far so good on notation. All right, now limits don't always exist. So a limit will exist if and only if both the limit from the left-hand side and the limit from the right-hand side get close to the same y value. So they both have to exist, and they both have to be the same. Now, those of you who've had calculus before might remember some pieces of this, and that's great. And if you haven't, this already sounds like something that doesn't make any sense, probably, because I haven't shown you any examples. Okay, But have this written down, and then as I show you the next example, hopefully it'll start sort of piecing together in a way that you can see what's going on. Does everybody have this filled in? All right, so here's the graph we're going to use. Did it print out okay on your, on your paper? Does it look like this, pieces? Sometimes when the prints come through, it doesn't quite come through lined up right. But this is, this is what I want us to be looking at. Um, we're going to do five parts, if you will, to this problem. Um, you'll notice the first one and the second one have that plus and that minus after them. The third one doesn't. And then the fourth one and the fifth one don't either. So let's actually talk about these in order. The first one talks about the x value approaching, that's what this arrow means, approaching or getting close to an x value of negative 1. So the first thing you should be looking for when you see that is where in the world is x negative 1? And this is my location I'm talking about right now, right? Okay. This plus tells me how am I getting close to that value from the right. So if I take where I've drawn this purple arrow and I look to the right, I'm talking about this side of the graph. And a graph is actually the part of the curve that I'm talking about. So I want to put myself somewhere, if you will, on this curve. And I want to sort of imagine that I'm standing on the curve and I'm moving this direction because that's the direction that I'm getting close to the x value of negative 1. And it doesn't really matter where you start on the curve because eventually you're supposed to be moving close to the x value of negative 1. So these arrows are sort of pointing towards how I'm moving along my curve if I were sort of driving or walking along that curve. Okay? So if I'm taking this curve and I'm going in this direction, so I'm taking a road, and I'm getting close to this x value of negative 1, from the right-hand side, the x value I'm getting close to is this open, clear circle. Right? And what is the y value at that open, clear circle? Two. Two. Now, the reality is the y value doesn't exist there because it's open, right? But I don't really care when I'm working with the limits. 
what I care about is what's it getting close to. And it's getting close to the y value of 2. So this first limit is the limit value of 2. Yes? How do you know what point, like which graph to look at? Well, the graph that I'm looking at is all one graph, right? This is all one graph. But the portion of the graph that I'm on is determined by this plus or this minus. So this plus told me I need to be on the right-hand side of the graph. The other piece of my graph in this one's left of the x value negative 1. So I'm not on that piece yet, but I'm about to be because part b actually puts me to the left-hand side. So the plus or the minus afterwards tells me where I need to be. Okay. Now the second one here says that I've got an x value of negative 1 that I'm getting close to, but this negative means on the left-hand side of it. All right, so here's this x line of x equal negative 1, but I need to be on the left-hand side of it. So again, I don't care where I am on the left-hand side, but I have to be moving toward the x value of negative 1. So as I am doing that on that piece of the graph, that was really loud, sorry. As I'm moving towards that x value, what's the y value I'm at as I'm getting close to that particular point? One. That y value is actually 1. So as I'm moving along the curve from the left-hand side toward my x value of negative 1, I'm actually staying constant in this particular part of the graph, but the y value that I'm getting close to over here, this closed-in dot, is that y value of 1. Is everybody good so far? Here's the problem with that, is the third part. The third part doesn't have a plus or a minus, right? Which means I need to be approaching that value of negative 1 from both sides. So I need to be doing both at the same time. Now, this previous slide told us that's exactly what we're going to try to do. We have to approach from both sides at the same time. But this is only going to work, I'm only going to have that limit if they get close to the same value. And what happens on this one? No. They don't. One of them is approaching 2 and the other one is approaching 1. There's sort of a jump in the graph there, right? Well, when that happens, the limit doesn't exist. So, right down here, you can write out the words if you want, or you can just write down D and E does not exist. This limit does not exist. And the reason it does not exist is because the left-hand side and the right-hand side are not getting close to the same value. That's because they're not a function, right? No, nope, it is a function, but it's not continuous. Oh, yes. And actually, we're going to find out that there are some times when things aren't continuous that they do still have limits. The reason it's not happening here, though, is because of the jump. That jump in the graph is causing a problem, okay? All right, we're going to take a look at a couple more now. This one actually doesn't have a plus or a minus on it, right? It doesn't say which direction, which means I'm going to approach it how? Both From both sides. But it's using an x value of negative 2. So my x value of negative 2 puts me right here. Now. An x value of negative 2, if I'm doing it from the left, because I'm supposed to go from both directions, means that I'm over here going like this, right? This would be going from the left. If I'm moving at it from the right, it doesn't matter where I start. If you want to start really close to the x value of negative 2 from the right, you can start down here. If you want to start further away, you can start up here. But eventually, as you move this direction, you're going to hit the hole in the graph. You're just going to jump down and move over here anyway. So it doesn't matter where you start, you're eventually going to end up on this flat piece over here. So I'll start over here further away just so that you can see it doesn't really matter because when I get down here, I move over here anyway. Now, from both directions on this one, what's happening? They're approaching one. Both of them are arriving at the same place. All right? In the first one, it's almost like you told um, someone, I want to meet you at McDonald's, and they met you at McDonald's on Harrison, and you were at McDonald's on Kickapoo. This is a problem, right? You did not arrive at the same place. But this other one, you did arrive at the same place because they went to Kickapoo, and then all of a sudden they went over to MacArthur, and oh, voila, voila, you're at the same spot. So on this one, we actually arrive at the same location right here, and the y value you had told me was 1. Is that okay? Okay, we've got one more. All right, this one has an x value of 0 that we're supposed to be approaching. Again, from both sides because it doesn't say one way or the other. So an x value of 0 is actually located along the y-axis, right? And so if I'm working on getting close to this y-axis from both directions, 
one of my graph, or one piece, one side of the graph from the left is going to be doing this. But again, eventually I'm going to have to get to this open circle and jump up to, I'm sorry, closed circle and jump up to the open circle because I'm continuing to move along the graph from the left-hand side. And then I'm going to do the same thing from the right-hand side. And the question you ask yourself is, are they getting close to the same location? And the answer is yep. yes. Now, on this one, it's not very clear in the exact value. So the value you write down might be a little bit off of what I write down, and that's perfectly fine. There's nothing precise about this particular graph. It's not cro crossing at a whole number value. So somebody give me an approximation. What would you say approximately you're getting for this limit? 2.823. <laughs> All right, I'll put 2.8. <laughs> All right, so something around, it's a little over two and a half. I think we could all agree with that anyway, right? So we're something between two and a half and three. Uh, I have a quick question. Yeah. So on C, why was that it does not exist again? All right, so the reason that C does not exist is because from one direction, from the right-hand side, we're approaching an X value of, or Y value of two, and from the left-hand side, we're approaching a Y value of one. So they don't arrive at the same location. Okay. One of them gets close to two, the other one gets close to one. And for a limit, we're supposed to be getting close to the same y value. And we weren't doing that between the um, left-hand side and the right-hand side of negative 1. Okay. That jump in the graph at that one location is the causing problem part of it. Yeah. All right. We also have numerical limits. So this is a calculator exercise, which is why I still left the calculator up over here. Um, we're having... And this is going to feel similar to what we did back in section 1.1. Um, we are supposed to be finding the x value close to the value of 3, right? We're supposed to be getting an x value close to 3. Now, one of the problems we did last time, um, and it's actually more complicated than this particular problem, is that we said, well, if it's getting close to the x value of 3, it could be a little bit bigger than 3. That is, the value could be on the right-hand side of 3. That's bigger than 3. Or it could be something a little bit smaller than 3, which would be actually from the left-hand side of 3. So we're going to create two tables. One table is going to be coming from the left-hand side. So let me just write left over here. And the other one is going to be coming from the right-hand side. Okay. So left-hand side means it's values to the left of 3. Well, if you think about a number line, values that are to the left of 3 are smaller than 3. So I need a value that's getting close to 3 but smaller than 3. Do you remember how we did that last time, what we used? 4, we did, right, 2.9. And then we just sort of continued to add 9s to the end of that value, 2.99 and 2.999. Okay. They're getting closer to 3, but they are smaller than 3. We're going to do the same thing from the right-hand side. We need values slightly larger than 3, because if you're on the right-hand side of 3, your values are bigger than 3. But we still want to be getting closer to the number 3. So I'm going to start at 3.1, and then we'll do 3.01, and 3.001. Now, this table that I've set up, could be used for any function. I haven't used the x squared minus 9 over x minus 3 yet. haven't used it at all. All I've looked at is I'm talking about a limit as x approaches 3. So this table setup is very generic. You do need three of each of them, at least. If you want to do more, that's OK, but you don't need to. Three is going to be sufficient to see, to see what's going on. All right, so grab your calculator. We're going to put in this new function. It's going to be x squared minus 9 in parentheses over x minus 3 in parentheses. And then we're going to go into that table. I'm going to delete out what's there. And we're going to put in these values, 2.9, 2.99, 2.999, and then 3.1, 3.01, And we see values appear over here that we don't even need to, to move over to because the values um, don't actually have too many decimal places. The first one was 5.9, 5.99, 5.999. On the second table, I've got 6.1, 6.01, and 6.001. 
Now, the first table, the one that's on the left-hand side, looking at those x values down my table, what are they getting close to? They are getting close to 6. How about my right-hand side table here, this, this table on the right? What are they getting close to? 6. So since they're getting close to 6 on both sides, we're going to say that that limit value is 6 because they both get close to the same value. How yeah. do you get to that page? You. All right. What I want to show you that is part of the directions say, it says use numerical and graphical evidence. All right, so we've done the numerical part. From the numerical, that means the table point of view, putting in numbers, um, we've estimated or conjectured that the limit is 6. And I want to show you from a graph point of view what's happening to this, because we looked at a graph just a minute ago and show you that it makes sense what's happening. Now, I'm going to graph this in a standard window. I don't know what this window is currently set at, so if you'll remember, we're just going to hit zoom. 6 to put it in that negative 10 to 10 window. What does this graph look like? Looks like a straight line. It actually is a straight line um, with one exception, and the exception is at the x value of 3. But it is a straight line. So if we were to trace over, and you can hit trace on the graph and just move your cursor left and right, and you're getting close to an x value of 3, you can see what's happening to the y values, right? So, and if you zoom in, you can even see it better. So I'll zoom in just for the sake of it. Yeah. Sorry. So if I trace on this one now, oops, trace. And my values you can see over here on my screen are at 2.8, and I'm getting close to 3, and I'm getting values that are 5.8. 9.2, 5.97, and then I actually jump over where x is 3. It's at 3.03 now, and I've got 6.03. I'm really close to a y value of 6, right, on both sides of this particular graph. Now, I don't know about you, but this equation, x squared minus 9 over x minus 3, does not look that y equal mx plus b formula that I remember from the long Do you guys remember what this is doing? And if you don't, it's okay. Any ideas about what's going on in this graph? And what in the world? Why am I getting a graph called y? Okay, you can do dividing, but not directly right there. Do you want me to do first? Yeah. If we were to factor that numerator, we would find that one of the factors is x minus 3, which is the denominator, and they would reduce. The fractions would re fraction would reduce, and we'd end up getting a graph of x plus 3, y equal x plus 3. Um, with one exception, and that exception is at the x value of 3. Why can't I have an x value of 3 on this graph? Because there's a hole there. Why is there a hole there? Perfect. If I actually tried to plug in an x value of 3 on this graph, it's not defined because I'd get a 0 in the denominator. So this is not exactly the line that you're seeing on the screen of your calculator. It's a line with a hole in it at x equals 3. Okay? So a little bit different, but, but it still looks the same. It has the same kind of a feel to it. So my line actually looks something like, I'll write in here, I'll draw my graph in here, this. Okay? So in terms of what work you would show on this problem, you've got your table set up. We would draw this graph, and a sketch is fine, but you need to show me on your sketch that at 3, you're saying that this is about at 6. You know, put some units in there to give a little bit of perspective. Again, I'm not looking for, for it to be perfectly accurate. I want a sketch that shows that you looked at your calculator, you verified that x equals, or when x equals to 3, y equal to 6 is a reasonable value. Does that make sense? Okay, none of you are complaining anyway, so I guess I'm all right with that. All right, we're going to do it one more time, but we're going to do the graph uh, as a different graph. Um, we're, we're taking a look at almost the same equation. What's different about this equation than the last one? It's one tiny difference. Yeah, I have an addition on the top, right, Matt? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The addition there, is, or the, the sign on the top has changed from subtraction to addition. 
um, my table is going to set up exactly the same way. And so this is actually pretty nice in terms of the fact that we've already set up this table once in our calculator. So I can put in the 2.9, 2.99, and 2.999 here on my notes, and 3.1, 3.01, and 3.001. And if you take a look into your um, table on the calculator, you don't have to enter them again because they're already there from before. So that's kind of nice, right? They're already here. Um, but, of course, the y values changed because I changed my function. And they changed enough that I might actually need to move my cursor over here and take a look. So the first value is negative 174.1. The next one, negative 1794.01. And the next one is negative 17,994.001. On the other side, I have 186.1, 1806.01. And then 18,006.001. So we filled in the table. Now we need to talk about what the table's telling us. All right, so this first gra- or the first table is the left hand side. So if I'm using the left hand side table and I'm going down that table, what is happening to my x value or my y values, my limit value? My y values, I said it right the first time, my y values. They are decreasing rapidly. They're getting very, very negative and big negative numbers, right? What would you think we might say about this particular side of that table? What's it approaching? Negative, negative infinity. Negative infinity would be the right answer. Very good. It's getting infinitely large and negative. What about the other table? Positive and infinitely big. So this one would be approaching positive infinity, right? So one graph is approaching negative infinity, which means it's going down on the graph forever. The other side of the graph is going up forever. What's the limit then? It doesn't exist because they're not approaching the same thing. Make sense? One side's becoming infinitely large and positive. The other side infinitely large and negative. So this limit does not exist. And let's look at it from the graph point of view. So just put your windows up to your window. Two, six. You can't even see the top of the graph, actually, in the standard window. But I do have an x value over here at 3 that I'm supposed to be looking at. And I've got an asymptote there. That's why your graph, we saw something like this last time. That's why your graph is putting in that straight line. It's trying to connect the the two sides of the graph, and it doesn't know what to do with that. And so we basically got a graph that looks something like, again, it's a sketch like this. And if we zoom up, you're going to see the same image up here, but on the top. Because the graph's window is not appropriate. If we zoom out, we'll see it. So if I do zoom three and hit enter and I scoot the graph all the way out, all of a sudden now we see the top part up here. Yours may not have a line. Um, Some of the calculators are newer than others, and yours is obviously very new, and so it's actually a better version of not being able, it it doesn't do some of the sort of quirky things that the older versions do. The version that I'm using is a TI-83, which is the first kind of version of the calculators you guys are all using, and so it has um, more um, visual errors in it than some of the newer ones do. So yours may not actually show that vertical line, which is more accurate. There shouldn't be a vertical line there. Um, Now, in terms of drawing on your paper, you should recognize, though, that it is, in fact, going to be some sort of a vertical line. And so if you draw that vertical line in like my calculator did, that's not OK. I mean, that's, that's absolutely not really there. Um, so drawing it dotted is what you would want to do. That dotted line is the appropriate way to do that. Yes? How, do I, how would I tell where it would be there? Well, it has to be at 3, because that's what my x value oh, yeah. is getting close yeah. to. So you don't actually yeah. have to draw dotted line. You don't have to draw the dotted line. That's correct. But if you're going to draw something there, it needs to be dotted. Did you have a question? Yeah. Yes. Like, what's the difference between those two? Because you got like really um, 
different numbers, but yet, like, the equation was the same. Really different numbers than before? You mean than the equation before? Okay, good question. So this equation had that plus sign in it, right? We talked about that at the beginning, and the last equation had that subtraction sign. What is it about that sign that made such a big difference? Because that's a big difference. <coughs> when we got something that's a completely different answer, why? This one's not factor. This one's numerator doesn't factor. Because this numerator does not factor, we don't have the ability to cancel out that denominator. And that denominator is becoming very, very close to zero as the x value approaches three. Because this value right here is getting very, very close to three, every time I get closer to three, I'm dividing by something very, very, very small. And if you think about it, when you divide by something very small, the whole fraction gets very, very large. And that's what's happening is that I'm getting a value, the whole output value that's very, very large because I'm dividing by something that's very small. And if you want to sort of give yourself a reference point, think about it. 1 over 10 is 1 tenth, right, 0.1. 1 over 100 is 1 one hundredth, which is 0 0.01. If I make the number on bottom 1,000, I get three decimals and then that, and that, and that one. So the numbers, as I get larger and larger values on the bottom, are actually much, much smaller fractions. And the reverse is exactly true if I let the numbers get bigger on bottom. I mean, smaller on bottom instead of bigger. These fractions get smaller. Well, OK. So likewise, these, these values get very small because the denominators are getting very big. If I do the reverse and I get denominators that are getting really small, so instead of having these numbers getting very big on bottom, but I have them get very small on bottom, like I do 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, and so forth, these numbers get very large. And that's what's happening on this particular example, is my denominator, as I'm plugging in those x values, keeps getting smaller and smaller, which means the whole fraction keeps getting bigger and bigger. And the reason that didn't happen over here is because the reality is that if I factored this, the denominator would go away, and then it wouldn't matter what the value is because the denominator is reducing with the numerator. So those signs actually create quite a big difference in what's happening. All right, we've got one last example on this one. This example wants us to sketch a graph of a function with the following properties. All right, so let me first comment that there's not one right answer, okay? So you could have a very different looking answer than someone else, and you could both be correct. The operative word is could. That doesn't mean that any answer is right, obviously. There are some features here that your graphs will have in common, all right, no matter what they look like. So let's go through some of these pieces. The first piece will look exactly the same on all of our graphs. It tells us that f of 0 equals 1. What does that mean? It means you have crosses it. Crosses what? Good. It crosses the y-axis at the y value. I'm sorry. Let me get that in there. The y value of 1. So far, so good? That's going to be the same on everybody's graph, no matter what you have. If you don't have that piece, you've got an error. All right. The next piece starts talking about limits. This first one talks about the limit as x approaches 0 from the left. So I need to be on the left-hand side. That's quadrants two and three, if you remember that from trig. I'm over here, and I'm supposed to be getting close to the y-axis, because that's the same as the x value of one. But the value I'm getting close to on that axis is what? Two. two. So I'm not getting close to that dot that I just made. I'm getting close to this particular line now at two. But it doesn't tell me how. So it could do anything on the left-hand side of that graph as long as it gets close to that sort of line that I just drew in. So I'm going to do something. It has to be a function, okay? So you do have to be a little bit careful. But it has to get close to here. Now, it can't actually equal that value. I can't draw a closed-in circle there. Do you remember why? Uh, like line function test or something like that? Yes. We call it a vertical line test. In order for something to be a function, it has to pass the vertical line test, which means every x value has only one y value that goes with it. So I can't have two closed-in circles on top of each other. Likewise, when I drew this piece over here, I told you you have to be a little bit careful on how creative you get 
because you can't, you, you can't do something like this. That wouldn't be a function because it would fail to pass that vertical line test. So whatever you do over here that's creative, it better still pass the vertical line test. And the reason I know it's a function and I actually have to follow those rules is because they're giving it the name f of something. Okay? They also tell it that it's a function. Okay? So those pieces actually give us that information that it has to be drawn in that way. All right, other side of the graph. This one says I want the limit as x approaches 0 from the right. And what y value is it supposed to be getting close to? 3. So not the same place, of actually one above it, from the right-hand side. And now I'm going to draw something that's just incredibly boring and make it look like that. Because I can do whatever I want on the other side of the graph. As long as when I get close to that y-axis, I'm getting close to the open <coughs> circle that I just drew at the y value of 3. So this would be an example of an appropriate solution to this problem. And again, yours may look different. But there are pieces. The pieces that are going to look the same are the ones that are really close to, this, to right here. Right? All right. Any questions on that one? All right.